a negative? Arab, I think that on the Arab street, Zionism yeah. has really been quoted with everything nasty negative. you can think mm -hmm. of, from racism mm -hmm. to apartheid mm -hmm. to Nazism. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. just really been dragged through the mud. In the 1980s, Z the UN passed the, Zion the infamous Zionism is Racism movement, and of course, it was withdrawn. However, that legacy still goes on today. And you, what you also have to understand is on campus, we have an entire generation of children who were born into this world where Zionism is a dirty word. Mm -hmm. So we have many young Jewish students, or just young pro-Israel students on campus, they don't even have to be Jewish, who are afraid to associate themselves with Zionism because it has this huge sig stigma attached mm -hmm. to it. And I just wanted to say one other thing, getting back to UC Irvine and what Michael Oren had said right. about how he wished that they could right. have dialogue. Right. You know, it's like I said before, the campus is sort of a microcosm of the international stage. What's going on right now, we have the Israelis begging the Palestinians to come back to the, negotia the negotiating table, and they simply refuse to budge. And unfortunately, it's the same way on campus right now. I really offhand cannot think of a single event in the past two years I've been working with Stan with us and doing these sorts of events on campus where we were able to have a real discourse and dialogue with students from on the other side of the issue because simply they're just not interested in it they're really interested in shutting down any dissenting viewpoint so they're really so the, the arab students aren't interested in having a dialogue at all i mean they're just shouting and screaming i mean what would would have been a much better idea you know you, not everybody has to agree and if they they have some objection with israel and they have some objection with judaism or uh, zionism or what have you they could have waited into a question and answer and they could have viewed their viewpoints and say you know we really feel that israel is the aggressor blah 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 and really got their and viewpoint that would have been out. Totally legitimate. And I just also want to make one point. You know, it's not what, just, what it's is not it? just Arab yeah. students that are part of this problem. I mean, it's really gotten to be Global. quite fashionable on campus. If you look at across Europe, even in this country, on mm -hmm. a lot of left-leaning schools, mm -hmm. it's. And the anti-Israel movement is now a very posh, popular movement to be a part of on campus. I don't, I don't understand it because our terrorists, the, the terrorists that we're experiencing terrorism, I should say, in Afghanistan, in in uh, in Pakistan, and all these in Hamas groups, and you know that's coming from the Arab. There's a lot of Arab, you know, these organizations, these left, these very right-wing Arab groups. Then why hasn't be, being that Israel? is the only democracy in the Middle East and they are the allies of the United States. Why are people from the U.S., students I should say, from the U.S. not seeing that and why are, why are they not going toward their allies instead they're going toward what's happening, their enemy, I mean maybe the enemy, they aren't the enemies, the, the students, but they're, the, some of the philosophy that they're hearing is the um, enemy. I have please an answer for that really. Yeah. Um, it has to do with the media, and the media has distorted the word. And so really what we've tried to do with AZM, I saw this um, last January, there was AZM a is American Zionist movement. I, I tell these young people to talk not in initials. Everything's an acronym. Yes, everything's an <laughs> in acronym, initials and everything today. So, so, that so what we're trying to do is we're reclaiming Zionism. We're having people say, what's your Zionism? What does Zionism mean to you? We're kind of approaching the media from a positive aspect, mm -hmm. from a positive angle, and having people really define what it means so whether it means for you that you love the nature in Israel whether it means for me that I love the food whether I love the people whatever it is that's my Zionism we've started this campaign around it for people to really take ownership of the word and a lot of people who thought maybe they were anti-Zionist or they didn't know what Zionism means when they start talking about it when they start dialoguing, dialoguing about it they realize wow, I really am Zionist because I'm pro-Israel. And really, those two things are not separate. You know, it's interesting. I was at uh, a bookstore uh, just recently. I was actually, actually at Borders. And I asked to see some books on Zionism. And they brought me into the religious section. And would you believe there were only two books on, on Judaism in the religious section. I could get the political books upstairs, which they forgot to tell me they were upstairs. And I thought, what, there, I mean, there's only two books on Judaism in the whole, in whole, uh, all of Borders? She says, well, you can get the rest of it off, you know, if you want to go online and you can get it. And I said, excuse me, this is something, in, and actually it was my husband who found the rest of the books on the second floor. You know, that is a major problem. Yeah. And at Stand With Us, we've actually launched a campaign called librarians for fairness where we found that 
and libraries all across the country, they're lacking just standard Zionist books from mm -hmm. Theodore Herzl, Zabja Bektinsky. Really basic Zionist readers are absent from libraries. So our, our campaign was Stand With Us, Librarians for Fairness. We actually ship out thousands of books for free to libraries to make sure that they have the materials that are mm -hmm. necessary to be able to do research. Well, I'm going to tell you, Brett, the book that I found was by an evangelist, uh, um, not a priest, he's a reverend, or what is it, what are the, the evangelists there? Um, sure, pastor. Pastor, or what, and it was, he was talking about Christian Zionism, mm -hmm. because there's a whole Christian community that are pro-Zion, oh, yeah. and I was very, very, very I, I couldn't believe what I was reading. I said, oh my God. And he was, in, you know, he was talking in defense of Israel. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was, I mean, it was amazing. My husband said, oh, you don't want to buy, a, you know, that book. And I said, absolutely. That's the book I want because that's where I was getting a lot of pro Even with the Zionists. campaign, we're focusing mainly on the Jewish community. I work but, a lot with yeah. 20s and 30s in Chicago. Um, but we're also reaching beyond that. We're working with the Christian community as well. I would love to have a Muslim person speak about what their Zionism means to them. It's really open. So we're taking videos mm -hmm. of people here and in New York. We also have on our website, um, which is available where people can submit their mm -hmm. videos mm -hmm. as well. So this is really going to be an international campaign it, to bring back the word and give I, it a positive meaning. I want to talk about their professors whose Middle Eastern chairs are sponsored by Saudi Arabia. How do you teach Jewish students to stand up to these pro-Palestinian professors, especially when there is a great involved. Well, that really is the key. Um, it's always with very much care that we proceed with any sort of advocacy training, because there's very sensitive issues involved. These students are intimidated in class. If Can you imagine having a professor demonize your, home, your homeland? demonize this country that you love. In your heritage. You. Your heritage, and you're afraid to speak out because yeah. there could be a grade involved mm -hmm. or even your reputation at school. A lot of students feel very intimidated and they don't want to speak up. So we actually try to help support the students either by helping them write letters to their professors, by coaching them on great things to say, and really, for the most part, you'd be very uh, interested to find that the professors generally are very open and they want to debate in class. So I mean, I don't think that there's a professor out there that really wants their students to just sit there and absorb everything that they're telling them. They want to have a dialogue. So so a lot of the times when the students finally speak up or go into the professor for office hours and challenge their viewpoints, the professor really appreciates it. Well, how do you work with, and I'm sure my, uh, you, I, any one of you can chime in here, um, how do you work with students that are being, you know, when they're on their campus, they're, they're seeing signs, you know, uh, in fact, this was shocking to me when on one of the tapes I was seeing um, a, a sign that said, Jews go back to the ovens and long live Hitler and here you're a Jewish student and you, these signs are all around and 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 it, it's so intimidating and I know if I was part of the university I wouldn't know what to do I would be so you know I would be I w I'm wondering if someone would want to go back home and and not go to that college or transfer to another college or it, it's it's so humiliating and so intimidating what do you do why do you train students to not act defend you know not to be defensive but to really be offense, you know, to, to be on the offense, right? Not well, the defense. At Stand With Us, our motto is education is the road to peace. So what we do is we try, when we see these sorts of very insightful things happening on campus, we work with the students to find a formula that works with them and works for their campus. Because really, they know their campus best. We can't come in and tell them A, B, and C. It's very easy. It's not. It's very challenging, and each case is different. So we really work with the students to help them bring the right speakers, to give them the right points of view, to give them the right talking points, to give them the right materials, to be able to help educate their campus community. Because more education education is really what's needed to stop this hatred. Mm -hmm. A lot of it just really comes from ignorance. Mm -hmm. you know, and the sign, do, do you tell them, I mean, do you tell them to carry a sign, uh, that, you know, or, or not to use signs? I mean, you Well, actually, at StandWithUs.com, we have hundreds of signs available and free brochures. We ship out thousands of uh, packets of literature. What are the signs? What are the, what are some of those? Well, what are very they? easy, like, um, like very simple messaging, like free Gaza from Hamas. In Gaza, that's an example, it's a sign we use a lot. In Gaza, the civilian population is being held hostage by this Our terrorist Hamas. organization, Hamas. Mm -hmm. So a very simple campaign.